welcome back to civil engineers youtube channel which one is the best foundation for normal residential building if you want to build your house and you don't know which is the best foundation for normal residential building so watch this video till the end okay if you are new on this channel so you may like this video and subscribe the channel if you have already subscribed the channel so you may like the video guys you can see here this is footing and this is now other footing because this is its section and you can see this is column this is column on the top of this we have a slave okay this is slave again we have a footing column on the top of this column we have the other one and you can see this is its slave okay on the top of this so this is called foundation or footing Remember guys, if you want to build your house and you don't know which one is the best, so I'm recommending you. If the span between two columns is here, suppose this is, you can see, sorry for this, okay. If you see this is one footing and this is other footing. If this span between two footing is and inside this is the column, okay, and this is also the column. So if the span between two columns is here, less than five feet, less than five feet. So use combined footing. This is called combined footing because here we will create same foundation or same footing. Okay. So that is called combined footing because it doesn't uh, take a maximum account, um, maximum amount. So therefore, it, it it cost is low. Okay. So if the span is here, this is one footing, and this is other footing. If the span is up to fourteen feet, okay, this is fourteen feet span. So in this case, provide individual footing. Individual footing like this guys you can see this is individual footing okay so individual footing is best so the individual footing should be connected by a beam which is called grade beam this is a beam okay you can see it should be connected by a beam but here in combined footing as i discussed before suppose the size of the column the size of the footing is three feet by three feet Okay, so three feet by three feet between this, we have one feet, okay? If this is seven feet, so in seven feet, we have also, uh, we can also use combined footing if because it depends on the size of the column. So therefore, I'm telling you, individual footing is best for normal residential building if the span is up to 14 feet or maximum or more than 14 feet. So you can use 14 feet or more. So provide individual footing. Okay, individual footing should be connected by a beam which is called strip beam. Okay, or also you can connect by a plinth beam. Why not? Okay, but this is very important to provide the beam because individual footing uh, cannot support the, the structure load because if uh, we transfer the load on the top of this footing or in the top of this column, so it transfer this load by this grade beam and transfer to this column. So this is C1 and this is C1. Okay, so when the load comes on the top of this or on the top of this one, okay so it transfer the load from one column to another by the help of this strip beam okay so guys this is a short video but very important for you people to know about individual footing and combined footing combined footing cost is less compared to its individual footing but this is the best one for normal residential building because in normal residential building we are using more than uh, seven feet so therefore we can't use the combined footing combined footing we are uh, normally using in the commercial building hope this short video can help you thanks for watching see you in next video goodbye